Hi and welcome back. As promised in the previous video, we will investigate here the relation between music and politics, what I've labeled as the first layer. But before we do that, we first need to make clear what we mean by this concept of politics. Well, we will basically follow the classical philosophical and political theories here when we say that politics deals with the relation between the state and its institutions on the one hand and its citizens on the other. The work of the 17th century philosopher Thomas Hobbes can be regarded a paradigmatic example in this respect. In his famous work Leviathan, he explains how the state, through laws, regulates the exercise of power. As such, politics functions as a guarantor of security, a tool for organizing and ordering social interactions. Now, the point that I would like to make here is that there is a mutual relation between music and state politics. First of all, state institutions are about the only ones that can legislate on the loudness of music in public spheres, on noise pollution. A nice example of this happened recently in a city in the south of the Netherlands. There, the local government prohibited the priest to ring the bell at 7.15 a.m. to announce the first service. The main reason was that the church bells produced sounds louder than 80 decibels, and this is not allowed before 7.30 a.m., according to the regional environmental services. What becomes clear from this short example is how the state has a monopoly on the politics of noise abatement, on the regulation of public sounds, including music. However, and perhaps more interesting than the previous example, are the ways in which the state and its institutions use music to gain con more control, to maintain or increase power and to manipulate citizens. We will have to confine ourselves to a few examples here, but let's hope that they give a good impression of the potential relations between music and state politics. The first example takes us to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Here, music is often used to praise the political leaders. Singing praise in Congo known as Libanga has occupied an important place in Congolese political culture. Especially traditional music is systematically refocused on honoring the ones in power. The system of state-sponsored singing was first promoted by the Mobutu regime in the 70s and 80s, but has a much longer tradition. Here, music is used to create an image of support and solidarity around the political leaders. A second example takes us to the detention camps for America's war on terror. As is common knowledge these days, military information services often use loud pop music to exercise power over the prisoners. The effect is both physical, it simply hurts and disrupts sleep, especially when played for a long time, and psychological. People are humiliated become disoriented and get insulted through specific rude and offensive lyrics. By imposing Western popular music on the detainees, the US and their allies want to show their cultural and material superiority as well as to claim a global sovereignty. But perhaps the most obvious and direct example by which a state confirms its existence, impact and importance through music is the national anthem. When played during sport events, state visits, national holidays, commemorations, etc., citizens confirm their loyalty to the nation state by singing the anthem, often standing up with the right hand touching the heart. The national anthem is a sonic sign through which a state reinforces its sovereignty. To summarize, we can conclude that music plays an important role in the affirmation and consolidation of state power. State institutions use music as a soft force to legitimize their existence and to discipline people 
in various ways. Before we will discuss the relation between music and the political, the second layer, we will first take a closer look at the work of the German philosopher Theodor Adorno, who has written extensively about the relation between music and politics. What are his specific ideas on this relation? And why has he been so interested in this topic? 